Hello, I am Dr. Sama Bilbao Leon, Director General of World Nuclear Association. Today, I am very pleased to be launching our World Nuclear Performance Report 2023. In this new edition, we use the latest data provided by the International Atomic Energy Agency and our own researchers to analyze how well the world's nuclear reactors are operating and what progress is being made in the construction of new nuclear reactors. Globally, the world's nuclear reactors generated more than 2,500 terawatt hours of electricity for the six-year running. However, generation in 2022 was just over 100 terawatt hours lower than in 2021. Well, this means that nuclear energy still meets about 10% of the world's electricity demand, nuclear generation should be increasing rapidly if we are to achieve the global goals of decarbonization and providing reliable and secure access to clean electricity everywhere in the world. The turmoil in electricity and energy markets that had begun even before the current conflict in Ukraine sent fossil fuels prices sky high and has brought the issue of energy security to the fore, alongside the increasingly urgent requirements for rapid decarbonization to tackle climate change effectively and the global sustainable development goal of providing access to affordable and clean 24-7 energy for all. An increasing number of governments are recognizing the value of nuclear generation to address all three of these challenges, including many of those governments in Europe. The European Nuclear Alliance of 14 member states have reaffirmed that nuclear technologies and renewable energies are complementary in achieving the United Nations climate and energy security objective and must as such, be an integral part of the European energy transition. We have seen similar levels of support in North America, with both Canada and the United States putting in place very aggressive and ambitious policies in support of existing nuclear and new nuclear. Similarly, in Japan, the Japanese government has accelerated the speed at which we are going to restart the existing nuclear power plants fleet and they had to extend their life for a little bit longer. And finally, Korea has recommitted to nuclear energy, both at home with existing nuclear and new nuclear, but also abroad in many, many, many markets. But government commitments will be good intentions unless we can turn policies into actions. So what can the industry do to ensure that it can grow at speed and scale? In comparison with many other sectors, the nuclear industry comprises many relatively small companies. And understandably, those companies working in the same sectors of nuclear energy are in fierce competition with one another. But if the nuclear industry is to compete effectively for its place in a future energy mix, then those competing companies need to work together to make the case for nuclear energy globally. Put simply, we will succeed together or we will fail separately. And this is why our association is committed to bringing our member companies uh, together from all the corners of the world. So collectively, we can make the case for nuclear energy. One of the places in which the global nuclear industry should come together and work together is at the COP28 climate change conference that will take place later this year at, in Dubai. At climate conferences, there are very, very strong voices that are wanting to be heard. And the only way for the nuclear industry and for nuclear energy to be listened to is if we come together and we work together presenting a cohesive vision of the very important role of nuclear energy in the future clean energy transition. Because I believe that if we work together, nuclear energy will help meet many of the global challenges that we are facing today and will help deliver a better world for everybody everywhere. So now to explain a little more about the conclusions of this year's World Nuclear Performance Report, I am pleased to introduce introduce its lead author, Dr. Jonathan Cobb. Jonathan. Thanks, Emma. 
The world's nuclear reactors generated a total of 2,545 terawatt hours of electricity in 2022. This total includes an estimated 59 terawatt hours of output for Ukraine. The majority of performance data used in the World Nuclear Performance Report is sourced from the International Atomic Energy Agency. But data for individual output of Ukraine's nuclear reactors has not been provided for 2022. Instead, for Ukraine, we have estimated an overall output based on other data sources, including the International Energy Agency and Ukraine's Electricity Transmission System Operator. Overall, this 2,545 terawatt hours total output is down 108 terawatt hours from the 2,653 terawatt hours generated in 2021. Excluding Ukraine, nuclear generation was 2,487 terawatt hours in 2022, down 85 terawatt hours for the equivalent total in 2021. If we look at the regional picture, we can see the influence of the reduction in generation in Ukraine in the decline seen for the Eastern Europe and Russia region. We can also see the decline in West and Central Europe attributed to the reduction in output in France due to outages and the impact of Germany's phase out of its reactors. There were minor decreases in South America and in Africa, but output was still within the typical levels for these regions over recent years. In North America, the closure of the Palisades reactor in the United States contributed to the slight decline in output in that region. In contrast, in 2022, nuclear generation increased by 37 terawatt hours in Asia. Nuclear generation in Asia has more than doubled in the last 10 years, and in 2022, nuclear generation in the region overtook that for West and Central Europe, and it is on track to become the largest generation region in the next five years overtaking North America. The total number of operable nuclear reactors at year-end 2022 was 437, up one from 2021. Just over 70% of all operable reactors are pressurised water reactors, with all but two of the 36 reactors that have started up between 2018 and 2022 being PWRs. We can look at the electricity generation of those 437 reactors in a different way, by the age of the reactors generating electricity in each year. This graph shows electricity generation from reactors in their first years of operation in reds and oranges. The generation for those reactors in the second and third decades of operation are shown in yellows, greens and turquoise with blues and purples showing the electricity generation by those reactors in their fourth and fifth decades and beyond. The rapid expansion of nuclear generation in the 1970s and 80s is shown by the continued presence of the redder hues in the chart, indicating reactors in their first decade of operation. With the slowing of pace of new reactor startups in the 1990s, the amount of red in each bar reduces. With increased construction and subsequent commissioning of reactors in recent years, the amount of electricity generation by younger reactors has started to increase again, shown by the increasing amounts of red in the bars over the last decade. With operators now looking at nuclear reactors generating electricity for 60 or 80 years, and the oldest reactors in operation barely into their 50s, there is a potential for many more years service from even the oldest of the current nuclear fleet. But how are those 437 reactors performing? Let's look at that in more detail. The capacity factor of a reactor is calculated based on the amount of electricity that it supplies in any one year, compared to the amount of electricity produced if it were generating at its maximum rated output at all times. What we see is that high levels of performance are being achieved by the whole nuclear fleet, whatever their age. There is no age-related decline in nuclear reactor performance. Indeed, those reactors that started operation in the 1970s are now achieving some of the best performance. 
if we look at capacity factors in different geographical regions, then we can see that in most regions, the capacity factors were broadly consistent with the averages achieved in the previous five years, with North America maintaining the highest average capacity factors, setting a benchmark for potential performance in other regions. When we look at trends in capacity factors over the last five decades, we can see a steady and substantial improvement in performance. In the 1970s, just over a quarter of reactors were achieving capacity factors in excess of 80%. In 2022, more than two thirds of reactors achieved this level of performance. So the performance of nuclear reactors in operation today is good, but what are we seeing in terms of new construction? In 2022, construction began on eight large PWRs. Five reactors commenced construction in China. Construction started on the first two of four reactors planned for the Aldaba site in Egypt. And the fourth and final unit started construction at Akuyu in Turkey. The total number of units under construction at the end of 2022 was 60. That's two more than at the end of 2021, with China leading the way, followed by India. Six reactors were connected to the grid for the first time in 2022. This included Olkiloto 3 in Finland, where construction of this first-of-a-kind EPR began in 2005. Much shorter construction times were achieved for the other five reactors, with construction of the Karachi 3 in Pakistan, an HPR-1000 Hualong 1 reactor, taking just 69 months. The shortest construction times were achieved with the construction of PWRs in China and the Chinese HBR-1000 reactor at Karachi. This continues recent trends where series build and the retention of skills through ongoing new build programs have helped contribute to more rapid construction times. The startup of Fuqing 6 and its sister unit in China is the subject of one of our case studies this year, looking at how constructors achieve this fast construction time for a first-of-a-kind reactor. We also look at the TL1 nuclear power plant steam energy supply project, which will supply steam heat to a nearby industrial plant. The use of nuclear reactors for heat supply, as well as electricity, is likely to grow as we look to decarbonize all areas of energy use, not just electricity production. And we will also look at progress with the Darlington nuclear refurbishment project, where the can-do reactors there are being prepared for another 30 years of operation. We're refreshing the publication of the World Nuclear Performance Report too, with the whole report now being published on our website, as well as our usual PDF and printed copy. This means that for each country with nuclear reactors in operation or under construction, there is also its own web page with a brief description of recent nuclear energy developments in each country, as well as charts showing electricity production, capacity factor performance, and carbon dioxide emission avoidance. The electricity generation charts include information on the ages of the reactors generating electricity. And here we can see some interesting differences in the age profiles of nuclear reactors in different countries. If we look at electricity generation in France, we can see the rapid expansion in nuclear generation from the mid-1970s through to the early 1990s, represented by the generation shown in red for that period. What we can also see that uh, for 2022, it is the light blue colors that are missing. This means it was primarily the loss of production from the younger P-4 and N4 reactors that affected nuclear output. In Germany, the phase-out is notable for closing reactors that hadn't even achieved 40 years of operation. Germany's reactors had achieved excellent performance with capacity factors in excess of 90% and had avoided the emission of more than 4 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide in total over their lifetimes. Those reactors had the potential for decades of additional operation and emission avoidance. In comparison, in China, the rapid rise in electricity generation from nuclear reactors is clear to see, with only its first reactors reaching 30 years of operation, and much more new capacity shown by the red bars. All this information and more is now available in the World Nuclear Performance Report 2023, 
on the World Nuclear Association website and available to download for free. But for now, from Samar and me, thank you for watching and goodbye.